Good evening. I'd like to call Thursday, September 19th, Berlin Select Board regularly scheduled meeting to order. To my far left is Justin Lawrence, Flo Smith. To my right is Jeremy Hansen. With us, I'm Brad Town, and with us also is Dana Hadley, our town administrator, and Diane Isabel, town treasurer. Uh, additions or changes to the agenda, Dana? I do have a few things that I'd like to um, add to the agenda, and some of them are related to what is on the agenda. Um, I'd like to talk to the board um, a little bit about the public hearing notice for Black Road for the, public, the second public hearing that's coming up. Um, and I'd like to um, have the board um, approve forgiving balances under $5 and um, I'd like to ask the board if they might consider a change and how that's done. Now, when I get there, I'll, I'll tell you. And uh, we have on the agenda the approval of the loan resolution. This is for the, the loan for the sewer, uh, Painter and Bike North sewer ex expansion project. Um, there has been an idea brought forward about ar arbitrage for a sewer loan. And so we'd like to talk about that. And everything else is on the agenda. <coughs> okay. Um, public comment? Hearing none. Uh, Treasurer's report. Okay. On September 30th, there's going to be a board of abatement meeting at 6 o'clock here. Okay, so just let everybody know. We do have a few people expect. Um, do you want to get abatements? And I think there might be a board of civil authority meeting as well, I believe. Okay. So just to let you know, so if you want to be here for that. I also did get the select board the August budget status report, trial balance, and delinquent tax report. And today I did get the preliminary education grant list. So I know what, what I have to set aside for money. So I'm going to hand this out. I just want the person to see what I got. Okay. So I want to make you aware that this year for the Washington Central, Central Union, Union Unified Union, Union. Union. District. Yeah. So, anyways, uh, that amount is six million seven hundred and three thousand four hundred and seventy fourteen, which is one hundred and eighty five thousand dollars more than it was last year for the schools combined. Just to make you aware, so that's what it is. Now, this is the first preliminary report. Um, I will be getting uh, the final one in May. Okay, and usually the final one tends to be a little bit less, or it has been in the past. So I'm hoping that will be the case now, but just to make you aware that it is higher. We knew that it was going to be higher anyway, but just to know exactly how much when everything panned out. Mm -hmm. The state is going to provide this number. So I want you to have that. And this is when they do their final one. Did you say that's in May? Yes. Is that when that's when they have all their state? aid and federal aid or whatever else yeah, they're they, waiting yeah, for the final and they calculation. figure it out. Also based on a 411 report, which the 411 report that the assessors mm -hmm. uh, put together, they have to do the final one in December. And then after that time period right. is when they really well, that's after all the all of that. exceptions and so forth. And errors and issues. Yeah, so okay. So that's all I've got. Other things I guess in the Does does that normally does the amount go down after? It has. The six years I've been here has gone down that last quarter. Mm -hmm. uh, and sometimes I think it was last year went down maybe fifty thousand. Yes, yeah, so that's what I thought. Exceptional. Yeah. Uh, but usually it goes down maybe ten or twenty thousand yeah. to help. But it could always go up. That's right. I, I understand. Yeah. Thank you, Dan. Anything else, Diane? I don't. Okay, have other things in the agenda. Um, anybody's still looking at the permit? Mm -hmm. um, vote on change of winter maintenance for Coos Trail. Coos Trail. Coos. There we go. <laughs> so at your last the meeting, um, you had discussed Coos Trail and that um, the property owner seemed 
amenable to um, having a no major maintenance after the first house. Um, but this is for one year. See how it for a yeah. year's trial. Mm -hmm. Yes, yeah, what it was. Mm -hmm. So I brought it back so that you could actually vote on that if you so desire. So I move that we uh, cease performing winter maintenance on Cross Trail after the first house on a trial on a trial basis for just this year. I second the motion. Any further discussion on this? Hearing none, all those in favor? Aye. Aye. Motion carries. And if this might be a good time, Brad, for me to talk about the public notice for sure. Black Road. Um, I'm going to schedule that public hearing for October 17th, the second meeting in October. Um, the state law, we are not required on between the first and second of any time period, but I think it gives enough time. Um, and I will talk to Tom about that. But I was wondering, I had originally put reclassification of a portion of the class four section. Um, and I wanted to check with the board to see if you'd like me to word it in another way. Well, well, the problems I see is we, we um, uh, really do need to talk to Rob about whether we can actually do maintenance on a class four, you know, for the winter, or what the story is going to be. Um, I have if talked you wanted, with Rob, and, and I've also talked with um, B. Tram, um, and there's not a problem with that. However, you're setting a precedent. Mm -hmm. I know. And that's what I worry about. Yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. So, use your best judgment, I guess, on the wording. I would. Just have some input. I, just based on what I researched the last time, I would think that if you're going to do any sort of winter maintenance on it, and we don't have to do anything to bring the road up to a class three, well, I don't know why we wouldn't. I mean, it's minimal, but it's you know 150 dollars we would get in state aid yeah. by upgrading it. Yeah, I don't think this is a financial thing at all. I think it's, no, I know. Yeah. I'm just saying. Yeah. But if you're going to do winter winter maintenance, it well, allow it. Why you wouldn't? Just reclassify it anyway. Yeah. To me, it's more of a safety thing, but. Right. That's, um, that's what I was thinking. Anyway, run it by Rob again. Okay. See All what right. he says. Then you can take and do your wording to your. So, are you thinking, I guess, what I'm really asking you is that it, you're not thinking of the reclassification, or should I stick I like, with that wording and then you could decide with that to change it? Yeah, stay you with could. that wording because we can always take and uh, reward it with, with a different. Uh, okay. All right, and I last at the last meeting, um, you had mentioned that it would be good to know about the assessment of the new property that was down yeah. there, which I'm pretty sure we don't have yet. Um, well, that if he's done with the apartment, he should have it. The assessor should be down there. Well, they usually pick up once a year around April first. I got you. Um, I could ask the assessor if they if they haven't done it, if they could. Go look at it. Yeah, take sure. a drive by. Yeah. <clears throat> That's all I had on that. Okay. Um, so let's see here. Outdoor automobile or automobile part storage ordinance. Well, this might be a very short um, segment. What my attempt was, and I had spoken to you some time ago about this, um, was to have some teeth of what we could do for um, people that have a lot of junk cars on their property that are not complying with it. I mean, it's against the zoning, it's also against the state law. Um, I've had a, I had a long conversation with Rob about this, and this mirrors a lot of our zoning regulations and also the state law. And he says, what, would, what is your point? Because you're still, even though you have, you know, you could have the civil ordinance, if it's not paid, it's still going to be the same process. You're gonna be stuck with the, I'm, I'm afraid when I first came, we had that case down on Neal Road and we had a lot of money in the legal aspect of it. We were sending the, you know, we were paying the sheriff to, Sir, sir, it was painful trying to do that, and then it would go to the court, and the court would say, "Can't you figure it out?" I mean, it was just we didn't we didn't get yeah. <laughs> any satisfaction. 
the state has a in their EPA division, they have something to do with uh, junkyards and salvage yards. Mm -hmm. Wouldn't it be beneficial to sit to set them on to the people instead of uh, well, doing we it have, ourselves? Well, we have spoken with the state about the individual that I'm thinking of, and he and the state has been down, and it is the state's responsibility with the way that the statute got written. Um, and I guess a number of years ago, mm -hmm. there was some outcry or some pressure on the state to do more. Um, so I have not talked to the state on this particular one, but I thought I would again and see. Yeah, because they're, they're, uh, they're response driven. They, they don't go out and look, they have to. But, a, but as, I respond, as I recall with the, the Neil Road thing, the, um, we called the state and the state came in and they said, yep, it's a problem. Have a nice day. Yeah. And they, they, ch they chose not to pursue any enforcement action. I think that's true, um, but I just thought I would try and encourage if we could do something. I don't know, you know. And again, it's the same issue as I just talked about the courts. They just kind of, you know, don't want to deal with it. And I think it's. You know, it brings us to another question, really, is that we have zoning that we have. We need to do a better job of enforcement of zoning. That's the um, and that's always the hardest thing to do. Um, and the DRB spoke with Tom in, in Courage, and they may come to the board to ask us to write civil ordinances to have civil fees, which I also spoke to Rob about, and he says, no, zoning would actually... And the zoning code does have some fees in there if, if you, you know, fines if you don't yeah. comply. It's when they don't respond to that, it has to go to the environmental court. And that's how a zoning thing is handled. And he says he wouldn't recommend for the board, just so you know, in case it comes for the board to write an ordinance making it a civil fine. Uh, so, so, so he, re he actually recommends against the adoption of this. He does. Okay. He does. So I have been, I have been a back down. Mm -hmm. I mean, I was just trying to get some sort of teeth, mm -hmm. um, and but I guess we have as sharp a teeth as we're going to have. Well, I mean, yeah. I would think that. But it's frustrating for the neighbor. Yeah. You know. Or well, maybe maybe we could take and push the state a little bit harder too. I would do that. Yeah. Yeah. Because you know, they're the ones that are going to take and be able to actually enforce it. Right. Much more than we can. Mm -hmm. True. True. So, and, and that was a, Rob made that point today, and, and I thought it was a good thing. There goes my ordinance. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so, um, anything else on that, Dana? No, no, thank you. I'll, okay. I'll, I'll, go, I'll go forward with working with the state on this issue. Thank you. Yeah. Uh, let's see here. Approval of loan resolution for sewer line expansion. This is the um, the same loan that you've been hearing about for some time now, um, and this is the loan resolution which you you've you've approved the loan, but you now need to approve the resolution, and you need to sign the resolution. So basically, this document goes through the different conditions of the loan. I think the most important ones is you have to pay this back, um, which I don't think is any surprise. Um, the loan is gonna end up being $2,196,000. Um, the bond was voted at 2.2, and there is about $4,000 in expenses that are being deducted from the loan proceeds. I guess it is exactly what that. I move to approve the loan resolution for the amount of two million one hundred ninety-six thousand thirty dollars and no cents. Um, they they amended that, Jeremy, after I sent you that, so it's uh, okay. two million one ninety-six thousand even. Okay. So let me hold on. Thank you. Two million one ninety-six thousand even. Okay. Thank you. I move that we approve the loan resolution. Uh, as presented in the amount of $2,196,000. I second the motion. Any further discussion? All those in favor? Aye. 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 Those opposed, motion carries. 
So I will fill out the lines, but I do need board members to sign. Um, Paul Giuliano says they've got title. They don't have enough lines, but he said just squeeze them in on that side. So Paul is our bond attorney, as well as the bond attorney for us. Mm -hmm. mm -hmm. We did have USDA did come the last week, Diane, and we had we signed the paperwork that you had given me authorization to sign as far as we wanted the loan. I mean, there's several mm -hmm. different steps, you know. They offer the loan. Do you want the loan? Yes, we want the loan. Um, <laughs> also, I think that this is the time that I'd like to talk a little bit about the arbitrage idea. Um, this is, uh, and Diane, help me explain it if I don't get it right. This is uh, for the, not for this loan, but for the bridge loan. As you remember, when we did the water project, we needed money up front. And what happens with this loan is when you spend, when you have your expenses, you gather that together with the proper documentation. Diane would send it into USDA, and they would send, they would wire her the money. But that you have to front the money in the meantime. So we don't have this kind of money to front. So we need, we're going to need to have a bridge loan um, to, to do that. When we did the water project, um, we did um, a letter of credit line. So when we needed money, Diane would contact the bank and say, I need $100,000. And, and they would forward her $100,000 so that she could pay the bills. I liked that because we weren't paying interest on money we hadn't borrowed yet. So, I mean, I thought that worked, and it worked fairly well for us. Um, the idea has been brought to us. School districts use arbitrage, um, and we talked a little bit with Community Bank, NA. Bank comma, NA um, about it, and they've explained how it works, and basically, you would take a loan, you would get the entire amount of the loan and you would put it in some sort of investment vehicle, obviously, with, we're, the bank. with the bank, with the same bank. And we are limited, as you know, it has to be a Vermont bank or a government security or of something. We can't buy poor fellow. Um, so, and, and the idea, and sometimes it works, is depending on the interest rate, you may make some money from the interest. Um, it's legal, um, which is which is school districts have done it. Tom's had some experience with it. I question whether we're, you know, when, when brass packs, when it comes down to the fact that when you borrow that money, you're, you're on the hook for the interest right away. And so depending on what the interest rate is on your other side, I'm not sure whether it's you know, we won't know that until we get quoted. But I wanted to put it before the board and have you give me your opinion what you think, if that's a good idea. I think idea. I could clarify no, I a little more yeah. even too. If you would, Diane. Yeah, yeah, okay, so let's say that we get a loan from the bank. Let's say that it's 2%, they're going to charge 2%. And then they have an investment within the bank that is insured. And let's say they're going to give us 2.25%. So you could have, you'd have that quarter percent. What we're, how it works for them is that because they're loaning us to the municipality, they don't have to pay the full tax on the interest that they, that they get. So it's a tax benefit to them that they would be passing along to us. But what they had told me, um, and this is the bank, said that if all of a sudden you draw most of that money at once, then you're not going to make any money at all. So there's just there's just more paperwork. It negates and, the right, it it does. benefit. Yeah. Right, which it would be my experience with the water, that that's what happened is I put a lot of money up front. Then as they were completing the work, it was just less and less and less money that I was paying out. Mm -hmm. So uh, the other part of it, too, is this is going to have a lot more paperwork. And my paperwork has to be perfect for the USDA. I mean, it's going to be beyond perfect. This could muddy up the waters. I don't, I've not asked the auditors if they, you know, if they would think it's a good idea or not. But I'd almost think they probably would not. So, so, I, so is, is the administrative overhead ever going to pay it back? Is, that, is the juice worth the squeeze? 
I have to wonder about that. So, mm -hmm. yeah, I mean, so what, in, the, in the best, most optimistic case, so there's a, the, the margin is what? Point, a, a half a percent? Maybe, you know, if, if that. So half a percent that. on if we're drawing down what, two million? Mm -hmm. So is that really going to pay off? Yeah, you know, the amount of time and stress that. Right. I, I think it might work for school districts better than it would for us. Um, and I also think that Tom had thought the idea would be we would borrow this money immediately and invest it immediately, and they wouldn't start the project until next year, and we'd have this time to earn this interest. My personal, I don't believe in taking a loan until you need it. Um, but we also it's a one year loan and and oh is it a one year so I mean it, it's you could get it renewed but it's not paperwork so that's the other part of it I would think a lot of credit would be a better way to go depending on the bank has did, did the bank give you any indication what their interest rate was? No. No, I um, have to put. I, I do you, need to put we, out. An we, well, we haven't put it out for mm -hmm, a bit mm -hmm. yet. Yeah. So, yeah. Yeah. See, but you. If there was substantial interest, it would make you worth it. But if, again, if it's a half a point, you know, half a percent, then I probably don't. Not. I think that's. Would you like us to put it out to bid, just so we know? I'm just trying to think. Uh, on two two million dollars, uh, half a point of interest is what. $2,000? Something along those yeah. lines. Yeah. $10,000. What's that? Ten. $2 million, half a point. Yeah, it's, it's 10 grand. 10 yeah. grand? Okay. It, if it's a half point. If it's a half point. Half which, point. If it's yeah. Is, it, is that really the spread? Right. Is it, could it be a bigger spread? Is it that possible? I don't know if it's bonds. Or if you go for it's going to be safe. Yeah. Well, it's safe. Um, I don't picture being much more but, than but that. you could uh, ask for if we were going to do an yeah. RFP you could ask for it both ways okay what is it if we were going to do the arbitrage and what is it if we're going to do in the, in the bridge along the line call? We were, that's what we were kind of thinking of but we, we put it out that. in both ways well, yeah. um, maybe we could have a better comparison mm -hmm. of what yeah and then if we have a reasonably concrete idea of what this might look like right. <laughs> But it's still going to be some fraction of the 10000 that us assumes that we're not drawing anything from it for the entire year, right, which, correct, is, correct. which is crazy. It's not going to be the case. Percent. So let's just, right. if we, we, I mean, I think you should do the whole so, yes. and then look at the numbers. Right. Yeah, right. How, how much is Diane's time and Dana's time worth exactly. going through the process? Even mm -hmm. this? Right. Looking so, at all the variables. Yeah. Okay, yeah, I, I would say yeah, put it out to bid with both. Okay. And if we can find out that it's actually way better, then, we'll, then why not? Mm -hmm. Nothing to lose and everything to gain. I would prefer to be here when you talk about that. So if you could put it in the bid to be the first meeting in November, please. Probably I have a motion on that. Yes. Um, okay, so move um, move to have um, Dana and Diane move ahead with putting out the loan to bid with two options, one for a line of credit and the other with an arbitrage arrangement. I second the motion. Any further discussion? All those in favor? Aye. 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 Motion carries. Uh, While Diane's here, Brad, could we talk about balances under $5? Sure. Um, every quarter we come to you and say, can we forgive balances under $5? And, These are the ones I have this time. And, and she's got, you know, people that owe 38 cents, 69 cents, you know, nuisance things. And I was thinking, I was, would like to ask the board if they might make this a permanent procedure for Diane to just clear the books. Give, clear without the books, having to ask every Without time. having to ask every time, clear the books of these. Um, Small you know amounts. what I would do is I put I give you like with the other reports I would just show you here is what I did mm -hmm. and then you could just you know so you want to do those quarterly and do the quarterly you know, right after the taxes mm -hmm. she could even do it I suppose if you approve that even more often yeah, maybe yeah. Um, yeah. I'm, I'm just thinking if we can just kind of have those in one one package. Mm -hmm. And if, if, it, if they do get resolved in the meantime, they can just do them all, all at once. I don't know what makes what makes your life easier. Uh, well, do it quarterly because if I don't do it right away, then it keeps accruing interest. Okay. So you're saying that if you do it quarterly, it works. Yeah, okay. then it, it gets it's cleaned out. But if I don't. Do but it, every month is interest, right? right. Yeah. yeah. 
So if you got one at four dollars and ninety nine cents, put you over the top. Well, it's not that so much as if it's three dollars and it keeps adding, you know, ten cents or mm -hmm. twenty cents or thirty cents or whatever yeah. it is. Mm -hmm. Thirty cents. I guess. So I'm going to um, do we want to actually have this off as an agenda item? Probably should. You want to put it on the agenda? Okay. Yeah, and I think, and maybe we'll just have, you know, we'll authorize the treasurer to no more than quarterly forgive um, balances of five dollars or less per our. Um, is, that in, is that in the charter, or do we pass it as a policy? What? It is in the charter. Okay. Yes. Yeah. For the charter, then. So we'll do something okay. like that. Well, I'll put that on for your next meeting. And I second that motion. Okay, all those in favor? Aye. Aye. Uh, let's see. Pool. Uh, so now we have a Pillars license application? We do. Um, Thank you. Thank you, Diane. This yeah. is actually an application for someone who is doing work for MVP Health Insurance. They're going to be over at the mall on uh, on Saturdays, Sundays, Monday and Wednesdays between November 30th and December 4th. Um, they do this annually in different areas of the state and Berlin is their target this year. Um, we questioned whether it really needed a peddler's permit, however, the man that sells Christmas trees has to have a peddler's permit and I think it's probably um, appropriate. Because they don't always have a business presence in the mall. That, you know, so they're, they're going to have a, I think it's a van that they drive there and... and so they're going to be in, in, the, in the mall, they're going to be out in the park. I think she told me a van, but... Um, they have a bus, and you know, it's for the annual election period for the yeah. year. Okay. Yeah. I think they have a bus. Usually That's what I think she told usually me. Usually they run a kiosk or a storefront or something. Uh, I would, I, yeah, I, MVP does have a, I didn't realize they were in a bus when I asked you. Well, now that you mentioned, I mean, it seems that it would be easier if they were inside, but um, <laughs> at any rate, um, this is what their plans are. Move to approve the application for a peddler's, peddler's license from Sarah and Joan. Can I second the motion? Any further discussion? Hearing none, those in favor? Aye. 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 Motion carries. And have we got all your additions done, Dana? Yes. Okay. Thank you. Okay, letter received regarding the Recreation Committee. I think last time uh, when Phil was here, Phil Gentilly, who was spearheading trying to get some interest of uh, people interested in serving as on a on our recreation committee that that committee has been um, needing life support ever since I've been here and I have um, a lady who has shown interest her name is Hannah Connor she lives at 181 Highland Avenue I did reach out to her and ask if she would be able to come in and talk to the board um, and maybe she couldn't tonight, but I had, didn't hear back. Um, so I just thought I would see if I could schedule her to come in sometime to talk to you about being. And, and Phil did give me a couple other names. However, they have not reached out um, yet. But I, okay. I guess I will either have Phil or myself to contact them. So, so, so the idea is maybe we do an appointment in the next meeting or something like that to appoint these folks to the... You know, I mean, I usually don't ask you to appoint people you don't know. I mean, maybe you, mm -hmm. you're comfortable doing that. It's, I, I, I think she was at town meeting. Yeah. Oh, she, I'm, I'm sure she's fine and, and mm -hmm. a good person, but, you know, I don't know her personally, sure. and she probably was. You know. And certainly people that are volunteering to serve in one of your committees, you don't want to discourage them. <laughs> okay, you can get a hold of them. I'll see what I can do about mm -hmm. that. Uh, appointments to an Economic Development Council. Yes. Um, as you know, we have an application pending for tax stabilization, and it needs for you to get a recommendation from the Economic Development Council. I think at one time it was called committee, but 
on our instructions for tax stabilizations referred to as council. So I'm going to call it council. Jeremy was on that. I was. And, um, and I guess. Right? And we would love for him to be on it again. And so I have um, talked with a few people. Um, so I'm suggesting that uh, Shane misspell. Shane is a gentleman that ran for select board member, and he also works with the Union Bank. Uh, Tor Nelson, who you may have heard of, um, used to be the chairman here. Um, Jamie Stewart. Stewart? Stewart. Stewart. Is it with a T? And I put, I put it with a D, didn't I? Yeah. Okay. Jamie Stewart is the I'm not sure what his title is. He's the executive is. director of the, the Central Robert. Vermont Economic Development Corporation. He's okay. also not, not a Berlin resident, I should point out. But. Okay. I don't think this has to be necessarily a Berlin. I don't, I, I, like I don't, think, ad hoc, I don't, I don't, I don't think any of the committees actually have to be. Yeah. Yeah. I, don't I, think think right. I think you're right. I think you're right. Jeremy, you know, and the other person is um, Roberta Haskin. Mm -hmm. And I thought these were, these were good people that understood a lot about economic development. And committed to. And, and committed to do it. Um, Roberta did say she is, after November, she won't be as available, so maybe, you know. But I think it is not going to be a long, I'd like to see the council continue, but mm -hmm. this particular subject. Mm -hmm. uh, I move that we appoint Shane Misspell, Tour Nelson, Jamie Stewart, Jeremy Hansen, and Roberta Haskin to the Economic Development Council. I second the motion. Any other discussion? Hearing none, those in favor? Aye. 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 Okay, so Congratulations. I have no idea you could move to nominate yourself. That's incredible. I like it. I didn't see any rules that I couldn't. I know. <laughs> nice. Getting ready to get ready to go. It was a shotgun effect. Yeah, why not? Uh, let's see. So I'm going to have you sign four out of those five, I guess, and I'll redo Janie's. <coughs> Mm -hmm. For some reason, I did twice on tour. Okay. Is there any executive session today? Yes, please, there is. For, for what? I think we should also do the licenses and the bills. Yep. Let's put personnel bottom one there. Um, I move to enter an executive session to discuss a personnel matter pursuant to 1 VSA section 313A2. Second motion. Any further discussion? You can shut off now. Yeah. Those in favor? Aye. Aye.